Hi, I'm Stan Cohen, and I am a pediatric gastroenterologist with the Children's Center for Digestive Healthcare. But additionally, I have the privilege of being the CEO and director of the Medical Advisory Board for Nutrition for Kids. I'm here today to talk about what happens when you have been told that your child needs a gastrostomy tube, or as we often say, just a G-tube. What that is, is that's a tube that's going to deliver nutrition directly into your child's stomach. It goes through the skin and into the stomach, going through the wall of the stomach as well, and then inside, the nutrition comes through either as a, um, a drip where it's going in very slowly, or it's in what's called a bolus form, where there's a fair amount that's coming in over a shorter period of time. In order to establish that, what we have to do is form a track through the skin and into the stomach. That's done in the operating suite, and it's done in a very controlled, sterile fashion where the child is given this tube. The tube itself actually looks like this. And that tube is actually attached to an instrument that pulls it back through the skin, going through the inside out so that the inside is actually held in place by a little pillow that will hold it inside and then it's anchored on the outside with a crossbar. The idea of that is that we have to get something to anchor it inside first. Once that's done, this tube is then brought through and then cut to the desired length. It's then attached to a tube that goes into it that allows for the delivery of the nutrients. That way, all of the nutrients that are either in a bag or in a syringe can be inserted into the tube and into the child's stomach. Of course, we always check the placement once the tube is put in place, and then we have the parents stay for a day or two in the hospital so that they can learn how to take care of the tube, how to deliver the nutrients through the tube, and how to use the tube in the most effective ways. They often meet with feeding specialists who can tell them that the tube isn't the only mechanism for the child to get the nutrition. Where children can eat, they can use that tube sort of as a safety valve, meaning that if they're able to eat part of their nutrition, uh, the rest of it can be delivered through the tube overnight or during the day in order to provide the nu nutrients and calories that the individual child needs. In the hospital stay, they learn all these techniques and practice them over and over again until they're very comfortable going home with the child and making sure that they know how to do it and all the caregivers around can help that child make sure that they're getting adequate nutrition. Once a gastrostomy tube has been in place for approximately three months, an adequate time to allow the healing of, and formation of the track that goes from outside the skin to inside the stomach we are then able to place a shorter device so that that long tube no longer interferes with the child's activities. That tube can then be essentially replaced by this idea of a button, which is what we call it, a gastrostomy button or a G button. And it comes in either two forms. One, where there is a hard surface on the inside so that the child can't easily pull it out if he's active and playing with it and um, twisting it and turning it all the time. And one that's a softer one. And that comes as a balloon that can be inflated with a syringe adding five milliliters of water where it's actually increasing it so that it too forms a bolster on the inside so that that's where we're able to protect it from being pulled out. Once that syringe is there, the button remains in place because the balloon is now holding it in place. And we have above it the tube that can be used directly. We can then insert the different types of tubes into this button 
and then it becomes essentially functioning like the original gastrostomy tube that was there. The end then attaching to either a syringe or to a tube that's actually delivering it from an IV bag-like device that allows it to drip in slowly through a pump that determines the speed at which the formula is delivered. To make sure this is clear, what's actually happening is that once I've inserted this into the stomach, this simply is the only tube that is there in the baby's abdomen at the time. So it's actually just putting the nutrition just inside the stomach. The stomach then digests that food and takes it downstream into the intestine. There's no other tubes that are taking it there unless you use what's called a gastrostomy jejunostomy tube, a GJ tube, at which point this tube has another longer tube attached to it and through it and that then leads into the small intestine where the nutrition is delivered. In this situation, it's simply going there alone. What's interesting is that if you have a child who's getting a gastrostomy feeding at 60 milliliters an hour, what that means is that there's only one milliliter going into the stomach every minute or a teaspoonful every five minutes. So there's only a small amount at any point going into the stomach, which makes it easier for the child to digest and to move through on into the intestinal tract. The advantage of the two different types of gastrostomy tubes is that they can easily be inserted and reinserted, meaning that they can be changed as they either um, deteriorate with time, as might be expected, or if something happens to the button, such as the fact that the top comes off and there's now leakage through the center. These are easily done, and in fact, parents can often learn how to do it at home.